that Christ has promised you is wealth untold. Count your many blessings money cannot buy. Your reward in heaven or your home on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what See what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. The scripture reading this morning is from Psalm 108, 1 to 5. My heart is confident in you, O God. No wonder I can sing your praises with all my heart. Wake up, lyre and harp. I will wake the dawn with my song. I will thank you, Lord, among all the people. I will sing your praises among the nations. For your unfailing love is higher than the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the highest heavens. May your glory shine over all the earth. There's a song in my soul And I feel it stirring in me This I know for sure That your love is like a flood And your mercy never ending I give my song to you There's a joy in my soul And it rises like the morning This I know for sure That your grace is enough And your promise never breaking I give my song to you For all of your goodness Is like a well running over Oh my soul it sings for you for all of your goodness i'll love you forever all my songs i sing for you yes all my songs i sing for you there's a hope in my
Everybody hear me okay? How's everybody doing? Good. Welcome. Welcome if you're here in person. Welcome if you're joining us online. Uh, my name is Rebecca. Just want to say good morning to everyone and welcome you all here. If you are here for the first time, a special welcome to you. We love guests here at MAC and something that we do to celebrate you every week is we pledge a donation to a charity on your behalf. And we do that because not only do we love guests, but we love our community. So in order for us to do that, we need to hear from you. So you can go to our website, machurch.ca, click on I'm new, and by filling out a short uh, contact card, you'll connect with us, and then we will be able to send you a few charities to choose from. I want to let everyone know that Mac Youth is on. Um, the pro regular programming has will be starting this week. They had a great kickoff event last week, and um, regular program will begin this Wednesday. So it's a little bit different this year. Uh, the junior highs will be meeting the first and third Wednesday of every month here at Mac from 6.30 till 8. And the second and fourth Wednesday is for senior highs, same time, 6.30 to 8. And if there is a fifth Sunday in the month, then it will be a joint event here at Mac. So please check uh, the Mac Youth page on the website for any updates and also for any of uh, the consent form for the year to participate. Just a reminder that Alpha is running here at Mac. It started last Tuesday, and it was really great. We had a really good time, the group that was here in person and the group online, uh, it was, they had a lot of fun too. So if you, there's still time to sign up is what I, the message I wanna get across to you this morning. Uh, so it runs Tuesdays at seven. Please register on the website if you'd like to attend, and there's still time to invite a friend uh, that maybe you're thinking about, uh, someone that would benefit from hearing about the good news, to be able to explore faith and meaning in life together. A reminder that we have an addiction support group running here at MAC. It's an open group that runs every Monday at 7 here at uh, in the study. You don't need to register. You can just show up, and it is a safe, confidential place for people struggling with any type of addiction or if you are in recovery from any type of addiction and need that support and community, um, please feel welcome to attend. For any knitters out there, the Knitwits group is going to be starting up again Tuesday, October the 13th, and they're going to be meeting online. So there's going to be a Zoom meeting where you can knit from home. And if you're not familiar with this ministry, this is a group of individuals who knit all sorts of different things that they donate um, to people who need those things. And they also knit prayer shawls that we're able to give to individuals who might be feeling sick or um, not being able to attend in person. So if you like to knit or would like to learn, we can connect you with Carol Graham, who is the leader of that ministry. Um, but if you just want to join, the Zoom link will be on, on the website. Baptism. 101 is coming up in October. Pastor Chris will be leading this interactive class on Thursday, October the 22nd at 7. Uh, you will meet here uh, in the study, but if you're not comfortable coming in person, there's also the opportunity to join online. Please register uh, on the website. Uh, it's a great place if you are thinking about baptism, have questions about baptism, it is a place to ask those questions. So please register if you have any interest at all. Lastly, your gifts um, can be received in several different ways. Uh, tithes and offerings can be given at the box at the back. If you're here in person, you can also uh, give through the website using the Tithely app. Uh, E-transfers can be sent to office at machurch.ca. And finally, if you're uh, joining us from home, you could mail or drop off your offerings as well. Well, thanks very much. That was quite a few this morning, so thank you for your patience. And now I'd like to invite up Stacy, who has a moment for the kids. Thanks, Rebecca. Good morning, everyone. So today's story is in the book of 1 Samuel um, chapter 117. It's really, really 
um, interesting and fun. So I, I ask all of you to, to look it up and read it for yourself. But it basically covers the nation of Israel was at war with the Philistines. And David's older brothers were fighting with Israel of that army. Now, David wasn't fighting. He was still just a kid. He was a shepherd, which meant he took care of sheep. So David was told to bring food to his brothers. But when he got there, he saw a giant of a man. Do you guys remember this? The giant's name was Goliath. Now, he was a Philistine, a real bad guy. But the thing is, everyone was afraid to fight him, even the king. So get this. David went to the king and told him, I'll fight him. David, the youngest brother, the shepherd boy, said this to the king. Well, the king said, yes. And so David went to get ready, but he was so small that the armor didn't even fit him. But David didn't need armor because, he, because God would protect him. God was his armor. Wow, right? That takes a lot of faith. So David walked out in front of Goliath. Goliath looked at David, and what did he do? He started to laugh. But then David said, Come at me with a sword, but I come at you in the name of the Lord Almighty. Now picture this. Goliath has a sword, and all that David has is a firestone and a slingshot. He learned to use a slingshot when he had to protect his sheep from bears and lions. So Goliath was on his way to attack David, but David put a stone in the slingshot and swung it around and released it. That stone went right between Goliath's eyes. David walked over, grabbed Goliath's sword, and killed Goliath, and he saved all the Israelites. So you can say David's gift was the slingshot. But not only that, he used his knowledge in battle. David was creative and smart. He used what he did know how to do, to figure out something he didn't know how to do. So God used David's gifts to defeat the Philistines and to help others. This brings me to our big idea. God can use my gifts. I think it's important that we find out what our gifts are and to use them for others. Let's read 1 Peter 4.10. God's gifts of grace come in many forms. Each of you have, has received a gift in order to serve others. You should use it faithfully. It also brings me to our question, our discussion question. What are your gifts and how can you use them for God? Let's pray. Dear God, you've given me more blessings than I can count. I ask that you give me opportunity to share my gifts. I pray that you help me to serve others and strengthen them. Humble me so that all this is done in your name and glory, not mine. Also help me to strengthen my gifts so that they can be of even more service. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We'd like to invite you to please stand. As we continue in worship and as we uh, prepare our hearts for the word, um, it's just so good if we can be in that posture where we're saying, God, I'm open. I haven't figured everything out, so just continue to speak to me, to teach me, to mold me and fill me by your spirit.
captured by your holy calling set me apart i know you're trying me to yourself lead me lord i pray take me use me 
sometimes we feel like, what am I? Who am I? What do I bring to the table? But God, the truth is we are your creation and you don't make any mistakes. So Lord, I pray for my brother or sister here today or connecting online that is in need of encouragement in this moment. God, that you will encourage their spirit and that they'll be able to encourage themselves in the Lord. Because, Lord, with you there is always reason for hope. God, there is always opportunity to move forward, to advance. God, there's always the chance for uh, redemption, for for another opportunity, for, for a new start, for a second chance. God, we thank you for your spirit at work in and through our lives. God, at work in and through your church around the world, even in this difficult year. COVID-19 and all the problems and uncertainty we've been facing, we thank you that you work everything for good, no matter what we are facing, no matter what we're going through, so we cling to that promise in this moment, to your goodness, to your justice, ruling and reigning in and over this beautiful planet that you have made. Lord, may your kingdom come, may your will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Lord, as we open your word now, we pray that you will find our hearts and our minds ready to receive your truth and to grow up in our faith in Christ. We thank you for this time together in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. Please be seated. Well, great to connect with you this morning and hope you are doing okay. Are you doing okay? Yeah? Yeah? All right, very good. Just because you're the early service, it doesn't mean you get to be sleepier, all right? So I want you to be lively, okay? Let's hear the amens. Let's hear the uh, woo-hoos, maybe. There, yeah. <laughs> Keep it interesting. So we've been doing this series called uh, The Way, of course, and it's looking at a study of Hebrews, focuses on a better way the way for faith and life. And last week we looked at this idea of step right up. Jesus, our high priest, bridges us to God. And unlike the earthly high priest who came before him, Jesus was the perfect high priest. He offered himself the perfect sacrifice, free from the impurity of sin. And this sacrifice would be sufficient not just for the year, like in You know, what would always happen with the people of Israel, they'd have to make that high priest, that high priest would have to make that sacrifice every year. But this sacrifice would be good for all time, would never need to be repeated again. And all we need to do is take hold of that sacrifice. We need to appropriate it for ourselves. And so we pray, thank you, Lord Jesus, for offering yourself as the perfect sacrifice. And then the second point is that Jesus, our high priest, understands us. He's not some far-off deity uh, disconnected from the pain and reality of life. And we know that life has plenty of brokenness and hurt for all of us. Jesus understands this. He understands because of his own experience as he uh, felt and endured temptation and pain and suffering. He relates with us. He empathizes with us. He feels for us because of this. So we pray, thank you, Lord Jesus, that you know me and understand me. And then finally, because of Jesus, we can approach God with confidence, which is just great. The act of being able to approach God is incredible enough, but to do so with confidence is like next level altogether. And we're all invited Not just the well-rehearsed, not just people who've gone to church their whole lives, but people who are new to faith or people who haven't been around the church very long. Um, Or it's been a long time and you've come back to church. It doesn't matter. We're all invited to come confidently. And our confidence is not in ourselves, but rather our confidence is in Jesus, our high priest. Because of him, we can step right up Bring him our worship, bring him our needs, bring him our requests. So the question is, what step can I take towards confidently coming to God? So, 
There was a movie some years ago, some decades ago now, called Big. Do you remember this movie with Tom Hanks? And the character, it actually starts with Tom Hanks' character, Josh, I believe the character's name is, is as a kid, about 12, 13 years old. And he is living a typical sort of kid, preteen life. And he's sort of getting tired of it. And he thinks, I wish I could just grow up, right? I wish I could just be an adult already, be grown up, and then I'd, you know, have more power and ability and, you know, could do what I want and this kind of a thing. And then he goes to this carnival and uh, plays this this Zoltar kind of game, which ultimately says, you know, I'll grant you one wish because he wins the game. So he says, I wish that I could uh, grow up. And then he wakes up the next morning and he you know, his full-size Tom Hanks. <laughs> and then he goes on to uh, do lots of things as a sort of kid in an adult's body, and it's a lot of fun. So this idea of growing up, maturing, what does Hebrews have to say about this idea of growing up? We're going to look at that here today. Chapter 5 and verse 11. There is much more we'd like to say about this, But it is difficult to explain, especially since you are spiritually dull and don't seem to listen. And and when he says this, he's talking about what we were talking about last week, Christ as the high priest. And the author says, we'd love to talk more about this. We'd love to teach you more. But it's kind of hard because you guys have become spiritually dull. You don't seem to listen. The traditional says you've become dull of hearing. The same word, the same Greek word is translated sluggish in chapter 6. So you've become dull, you've become sluggish. And we talked a few weeks ago about where Hebrews talked about being hard-hearted and kind of guarding your heart against becoming hard-hearted. This is always always a calling of Scripture to us. God wants us to be tender-hearted, not hard-hearted, where we're open to his will and direction in our lives. This here is related to the same kind of idea, but it ties more into the mind, you see. Because he says, you're not hearing me anymore. You're not listening anymore. And this is a problem, because when you don't listen, you don't take anything in, right? We know this is true. And then you don't grow. So I... I teach some uh, drum lessons, and something I look for and try to talk to the drum students about is I want you to start to listen for the drum part in the song. And it's something that they're not accustomed to doing. They just sort of hear the full presentation of the song with the vocals and the guitars and the keyboards and everything's mixed and mastered for the radio and, and all the rest of it. And they don't necessarily clue in on the intricacies of the drum pattern, but I want them to train their ear to listen and understand and hear the drums. And once they get it, it's like amazing. You can hear what the drummer is doing. And this is the same kind of a idea. But this state that the Hebrew readers found themselves in, this state of dullness, you know, of being sluggish and slow in their hearing. It wasn't the way they always were because the best translation says uh, you have become dull of hearing, right? So it's not something that you started out this way, but you actually became this way over time. Somewhere along the way, these readers, likely Jewish Christians, had regressed in their spiritual zeal to the point that they, they they were no longer hearing. They were no longer understanding. They were just kind of coasting along, going along for the ride, as it were. So this sets us up for our first point, which is kind of a warning, and it's this. Watch out for spiritual regression. Spiritual regression or kind of falling back. It's not something that happens overnight, but rather over a period of time, days, months, years, or more where we ultimately become kind of flat and dull in our faith. We're no longer seeking to grow, but rather instead we're just becoming sort of stagnant 
right? We're not kind of moving anywhere. We're no longer listening, no longer hearing, no longer growing. And Scripture warns, of course, about uh, losing your first love and our first love being the Lord God. And this is something that can happen over time as kind of dullness sets in and we could just kind of coast along and become, you know, nominal in our faith, where we might say, yes, I'm a Christian, Um, yes, I believe in Jesus, but perhaps we've lost a sense of kind of spark and imagination and excitement in our heart and thought in our mind about what that means. And we fall into kind of this rote religion, right, where we're even, you know, perhaps we're even going to church, but we're just kind of doing it to do it. Obviously, it's good to have routine and rhythm. Those are good things, absolutely. But we want our mind to be quickened, to be awakened, to be active, to be, you know, live and in person and moving forward. We don't want to kind of fall into that dullness. Amen? Amen. Amen. Verse 12. You have been believers so long now that you ought to be teaching others. Instead, You need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's Word. You're like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. For someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right, solid food is for those who are mature, who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. You ought to be teachers, the author says, and... The author thought but that by now his readers would have been in a position where they were doing the teaching, where they were doing the instructing, and anyone who has progressed well enough along in any subject or discipline in life is able, of course, to help somebody else in the same discipline, able to instruct somebody else. Someone who is an academic tutor knows that subject well enough, has learned that subject well enough or a musical instructor, or a sport coach. Usually they were a pretty good athlete in that sport themselves. They understand the game. Or, or a tradesperson can kind of apprentice a, a, a new person up and coming in that trade. There's that pattern, that healthy kind of development where you learn and grow and understand and then can teach. And this is what the author is saying. The same is true in our faith. Yes, We're saved by grace through faith. How? By believing. That's it, right? So we're saved simply by believing in Jesus and what he's done for us. But this is only the beginning of our spiritual journey, you see. It's meant to be a road of continual learning and continual growth. And at some point, we've listened, we've learned, we've understood enough that we can actually teach others, the author says, or at least we should be able to teach others. And this could be formally teaching others, like, you know, preaching or, you know, leading a class or teaching a group in some way, you know, in in, in a church context or small group context, something like that. But it could be simpler than that as well, where you're simply sharing your faith, which is really teaching, in a sense, with a friend or neighbor, where you're doing the speaking, you're doing the instructing. And this is what the author is getting at, that you guys should be able to be doing that, but I'm not seeing it because you haven't matured. He says, you know, you're, you're like, it's like you're still on milk. And, uh, you know, that is what a baby has, of course. And we know anyone who's sort of had a kid or seen a kid go through this phase knows that going from milk to solid food is... Um, it's a, it's a process, right? It's going to uh, take some time, and it's going to be sort of messy. My first son, Malcolm, well, he wasn't messy at all. He was very kind of organized and clean. But my second son, Josiah, he was, he was more like this. You know, things were kind of all over the place, and it was a lot of fun. And so it's, 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 it's an interesting transition as they learn to get to that solid food. It takes time. It's not always pretty, but the key here is that we are making the progress, right? We are, we're learning to do it. And this is the point. We're called to spiritual maturity. All of us are called to 
grow up in that sense. Spiritual maturity doesn't mean we have to know everything. We're never going to know everything. There's not a person who knows everything on the planet. But rather, there has been continual development in our journey of faith. Our character as we walk with Jesus, our wisdom as we learn from our brothers and sisters along the way, our understanding as we read and study God's Word, and our knowledge as we internalize God's truth. We know more, right? We understand more. My good friend uh, Stefan has been preparing for his wedding, which is actually coming up next weekend. It's been a challenging year, of course, to get married you know, originally, of course, before all of this, it was going to be a big, big affair. But now with all of what's happened with the restrictions and everything else, it's come down to 25 people uh, in a backyard. Still going to be beautiful. It's happening next weekend, Thanksgiving Sunday, actually. And, and I have the privilege of officiating for it. So I'm not going to be here next uh, weekend. So Pastor Glennis is going to be sharing, us, sharing with us for Thanksgiving. But what my friend Stefan has been doing during this time of thinking about and preparing for marriage He's been trying to, uh, he's been taking the opportunity to mature in his own faith, right? To do what the author of Hebrews would want him and really all of us to do, to grow uh, spiritually, right? As he's been thinking not just about marriage, but about faith and how, you know, marriage from God's perspective, what the scriptures have to have to say about it and plugging into a small group and trying to learn from Uh, people sort of further along in their faith journey and their maturity level than him and saying, like, how can I learn and grow, seizing that opportunity to mature in faith? And it's a beautiful thing because we're all called to grow up. We're all called to spiritual maturity. And now let's look at chapter 6. For it is impossible to bring back to repentance those who were once enlightened those who have experienced the good things of heaven and shared in the Holy Spirit. Verse 5, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the power of the age to come. And who then turn away from God. It's impossible to bring such people back to repentance by rejecting the Son of God. They themselves are nailing him to the cross once again and holding him up to public shame. So after listing some of the fundamentals that he believes the Hebrews should have a handle on by now, the author goes into one of the sharpest warning passages in the whole of the New Testament. And scholars aren't for sure certain if this is talking about uh, genuine Christians or just people who were around the Christian community. But one thing is for sure, these people have gone far enough in the experience of faith to know what it's all about. Right? He says, you know, they've been enlightened. They've, they've shared in the Holy Spirit. They've tasted the goodness of God's Word. And now they have tragically fallen away. They've turned away from the faith. They've turned away from God. They number themselves amongst the crowd that mocked Jesus while he was crucified on a Roman cross. And the author says it's impossible for such folks to be brought back to repentance because once Jesus has been rejected, there's nowhere else to go for genuine repentance. That is to say, Jesus is the way God has provided for us to experience forgiveness and new life. So if we reject Jesus, there is no viable alternative. And therefore, repentance cannot even be experienced. And this is very sobering stuff, of course. Uh, But note that if you are at all open to following the Lord, if your heart is pricked at all, if your mind is sparked at all by, you know, turning back towards the Lord Jesus, even when you find yourself in a place of not really walking with him, then you're not in this camp, okay? Um, And the text goes further to not leave us with this sober tone and warning. Let's look at verse 9. Dear friends, even though we are talking this way, we really don't believe it applies to you. We are confident that you are meant for better things. Can you say better things? Better things. Things that come with salvation. Verse 10. For God is not unjust. He will not forget 
how hard you have worked for him, how you've shown your love to him by caring for other believers as you still do. So better things, despite having laid out this frightening description of falling away from God, the author doesn't say that his readers are in that camp. In fact, he doesn't say anyone in particular is in that camp. Instead, he encourages his readers. He says, listen, that's not you guys. That's not your destiny. You have shown by your work for God, by your love for his people, that you've actually been changed, that your heart has been touched, that you've grown in your faith and you're continuing to do so. And God sees your growth. God sees your heart. So be encouraged. And this is really the takeaway for us today. Spiritual growth equals spiritual health, right? Kind of the best antidote to this regression is the idea of growing. That's how we become healthy. Growth is the antidote to regression and decline. This ties into what we were talking about earlier. As we purpose to move away from spiritual dullness and regression and instead pursue spiritual growth and maturity, we are going to become spiritually healthy because healthy things grow. Amen? Think about nature, right? We see it in what happens all around us in the creation. And it's a beautiful time of the year, really my favorite time of the year, as the, the, the leaves change color and you get the beautiful oranges and yellows and red in the trees. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's gorgeous until you got to rake it all up or, or blow it all or, or what have you. Um, but it is pretty. And it's sort of, in one way, it's kind of sad because, you know, the leaves are dying, falling off the trees and that kind of a thing. But we know that life you know, comes, that that tree is going to yield, you know, leaves again in the spring, grow, you know, new leaves because it is healthy. And of course, the tree continues to grow and grow over the years until it reaches full maturity. And this happens with crops as well, that they, you know, grow from the seed to maturity. And it's an incredible thing. And even human beings, we all start out quite, you know, borderline infinitesimally small in the womb, right? And somehow we've turned into these full-blown creatures, you know, with, with, with limbs and, 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 and we can do all kinds of things. It's quite incredible. We, we mature uh, physically to adulthood ultimately. And this applies not just to physical health, but also mental health and financial health, where we learn, you know, over time about how we can do better with our finances, how we can move towards a healthier financial picture and away from unhealthy kind of, you know, debt situations and into more positive uh, net situations and that kind of a thing. And relational health as well, where we, we learn, you know, what it looks like to uh, entertain a healthier type of relationship and learning from maybe things that didn't go so well in the past and that kind of a thing. And, of course, it applies to spiritual health. We have to be engaged. We have to be active. We have to be taking steps to grow. And if we're doing those things, then we will be healthy because spiritual growth equals spiritual health. Amen? So just as we wrap it up here, getting back to our uh, points, the first one is that we have to watch out for spiritual regression. How might... How might I have grown dull in my faith where I'm not really hearing, I'm not internalizing anymore, maybe I'm just kind of coasting along. We were talking about that idea of a nominal type of faith. Where is my heart, where is my mind missing, right? That I might, I need to kind of re-engage. I need to kind of get back in the game as it were, Right? And, and, and again, this, the author is showing that, the scripture, we should say, is showing that this can happen to us, and it does happen to us, right, if we're honest, and we have to kind of pay attention. We've got to be kind of on point, alert, as it were, so we can capture this when we're kind of tending towards dullness. Secondly, we're called to spiritual maturity. We're called to spiritual maturity. Where can I 
Or what can I do to grow in my faith? What step can I take? What action can I take so I can uh, engage in my own development and growth? Where we perhaps need to get back to some kind of regular prayer pattern or a different prayer pattern or reading the scriptures again individually, right? Um, Not just when I'm forced to with my family or when I'm at church hearing the word read or whatnot, but I need to take that step myself, spiritual conversations, um, engaging in a class or a small group. You know, there's a lot of things we can do to grow in our faith, but we just have to take the step ourselves. And finally, spiritual growth equals spiritual health. And really just a prayer to say, Lord God, help me to move forward in you. I want to be growing. I want to be healthy, right? Because, you know, I don't want to be kind of stuck in the middle. I certainly don't want to be declining, falling back, but I want to be moving forward, right? So this is the beginning of it, to have that open mind, to have that open heart. Remember that the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, Soul, and then what? Mind, right? So it, it very much is a, a mental game, if you want to put it that way. It very much uh, captures our thoughts and mind and attention. And when we fall into this kind of mindlessness, that is yellow warning lights, right? We have to watch out for that. Help me to love you with my mind, right? With my thinking, And this is what we've been called to. And then if we can do that, we can and will indeed grow. Amen. Let's take a minute and pray together as we wrap up our service. Father, we thank you for the chance to gather, to read your word, this great book uh, addressed to the Hebrews all those years ago, facing similar struggles that each of us face from time to time. And this sobering idea addressed today about spiritual regression, uh, God, we pray that we'll not be those who fall into a dullness of mind, that we can't even hear the truth presented to us when it is that we are not thinking and meditating about it. Oh God, forgive us if we have fallen into that place God, we don't want to be those who are dull, kind of, you know, coasting in our faith because we know you call us to uh, maturity. You call us to grow up in our faith, to move on from the milk into the solid food, the, the, the deeper meaning and truth, to be those who ultimately can share and even teach others rather than always needing to be taught uh, God, help us, help my brother or sister here today or connecting online, Lord, to take those steps to grow in their faith, whatever it might be. Oh God, I pray you'll speak to us even in this moment about a step we need to take to be purposeful, to be uh, centered, to be thinking about our own spiritual growth and development. We thank you, Lord, that as we grow, as we move forward, we become healthy. And Lord, we... Uh, there's fruit uh, from that process and there's blessing and there's life and Lord, you work in and through us and that's just incredible that you can work even through us, even through me, uh, even through my brother and sister simply because we say yes to you. Lord, we want to be those who do love you with all our heart, soul, mind and strength. God, we want to be those who think about your word and your truth and your life and your purposes in and through us. Who want to, we want to be those who are growing. God, we want to be like, as the scripture says, that athlete who disciplines him or herself for the purpose of godliness. Lord, we thank you for using each one of us. I pray your blessing upon my brother, my sister here today. Lord, we continue to pray that you will work uh, in this challenging year we've been having. God, we continue to commit it to you no matter what happens. And we believe that you will 
work everything for good ultimately for your people, for your church, God, as we seek to be your lights, your witnesses in this world. Hallelujah. Thank you for this time together. We pray these things in Jesus' name, giving thanks. Everyone said, amen. Amen. Well, listen, we want to pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. I won't see you next Sunday, so happy Thanksgiving in advance. Let's stand together and pray the Lord's Prayer as we close. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless folks so much. Have a great day.